out the love of the race. There are two of you here that I believe ever met Sam Alfano, Cindy Craven. If you had joined the club about this time last year, you would have originally been greeted by an 80-year-old man with white hair, kind of baggy pants, probably a flannel shirt, even in the summer. Or maybe he would have gone to his short sleeve blue shirt. But he had the same clothes all the years that I knew him. He had the same sports jacket at the same time. When he spoke, he always dressed up in his nicer clothes, or often did. He was a very consistent guy, very pleasant. He greeted people, he was very friendly, very unassuming. He didn't really think, okay, this is, wow, this is really a dynamic, fabulous person. Just a nice guy, always here. What I didn't know at first when I when I first came to this club was that he had been setting up the room and taking care of Mission Chapter Toastmasters since 1979. He'd been the Sergeant at Arms, the same job that Larry does, for 30 some years. And that seems like enough for anyone to have this extracurricular part of their life, just to set up the Toastmaster Club every week. And he also was a member of Club Five. He started there in 1969. So at the time of his death last December, he had been a Toastmaster for 42 years. And I imagine that during those years, there were perhaps a thousand people whose lives he affected through Toastmasters. And that's a pretty good legacy. What I didn't understand during this time that I knew Sam, the dozen years or so that I knew him, was that there was a whole rest of his life. The Toastmasters was just one thin slipper. And we talked a lot of, to people, non-Toastmaster people, in the six months since Sam died, about various things that, stories of his life. There were a lot of stories told around at the time of his memorial service. We had uh, several Toastmaster meetings devoted to talking about Sam, and a lot of things came up during those that we didn't know about. And we had dinner with his wife and widow now, Lee, about a couple months ago, and she said, I'm hearing things that I never knew about Sam. They were married over 50 years, and there were a lot of things that Sam did that he didn't bother to mention even to Lee. And almost all of these things were good things. They were helping someone. They were thinking about someone, reaching out to someone, and to going that extra mile for someone. And he did that right up until the time of his death. He was calling people and asking how they were doing, what was happening with them, right, right up until the time he died. One of the things I experienced with him over the years was that he was always getting me in up to here in projects and jobs things that I didn't think that I wanted to do, that I didn't think that I was able to do or competent to do. One of the things that he suggested maybe about 10 years ago or 12 years ago was that, um, that Ron and I be the MCs or the Toastmasters for the big Club 5 anniversary. Now, some of, some of you, Larry, you've been to a Club 5 anniversary, haven't you? Yes, I have. And Ron, of course, has. I don't know if anyone, I don't think anyone else here went. But Club 5 is <clears throat> the fifth Toastmaster Club in the world that meets at the Unitarian Society downtown uh, every Tuesday morning. And so it's kind of a special club because it's been going since the 1920s. So it had the 70th anniversary, the 75th anniversary, the 
80th. Anyway, so they had all of these anniversaries, big deal anniversaries. And a lot of people came, they invited people from all over the Toastmasters world. And, and little old me was up there with little old Ron. And we were emceeing this thing. And it was really kind of a big deal. All of those people out there, there were microphones, there were international directors, and why did he think, why on earth did he think we were capable of doing that? I'd never done anything like that before. Ron hadn't done anything like that before. And yet he said, okay, you guys do it. And we did it. And then not only did we do it once, but we did it a second time. It wasn't quite as scary the second time, but in a way it was. But this was repeated over and over again all the years that I knew Sam. He was continually asking me to do things that I didn't think I could do, that I didn't think I was competent to do, that I was scared to try. But he just said, oh, oh why don't you do this? And I said, okay. And then uh, that was the end of the story. I did it. And I didn't fall too flat on my face. And life went on. And I grew. Now, I thought when Sam died that this would be over. But how could he possibly get me to do things if he was no longer on this earth? How could he do that? Because, uh, you know, I'm not really big on the supernatural. I don't, I, I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I think I'm pretty on my feet on solid ground. And yet, it's sort of amazing, and I'm not the only one who's felt this way. I've talked to people at Club 5, where he was a member since 1969, talked to people here, about how it seems that Sam somehow is still directing things. There are only a few of us left who knew Sam. And I'm sorry that everybody who will come to this club in the future won't get to meet him. But he still is directing things. And uh, this over the weekend, Ron, Ron mentioned how we decided finally to be area governors. We could have been area governors ten years ago, eight years ago, four years ago. But finally, all of a sudden, when we weren't even considering the possibility of being area governors, all of a sudden, it was like, what would Sam Alfano do? And what Sam Alfano would do, if there were no area governors, he would step in and, and, and do, his, do his job. And so it is. There once was a man named Sam, and he is still with us.